Hello, magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. I am Rose Trajano, Secretary General of the Philippine Alliance of Human Rights Advocates and Convener of In Defense of Human Rights and Dignity Movement. Uh, for this morning, um, papasalamat po kami sa Foundations for Media Alternatives for inviting me to share with you uh, perspectives of the civil society organizations on business and human rights in the Philippines. Um, I was tasked to discuss with you today um, a brief overview of the United Nations guiding principles on business and human rights and, thus, and how does it apply to the Philippines. And the um, question is, is the Philippines already adopted the UNGPS framework? And what is the current status of the National Action Plan? I do not know if any one of you have heard of the National Action Plan on Business and Human Rights, but this is one plan that is expected from the Philippines as a member of the United Nations. Uh, I will also be discussing uh, key issues, concerns, and challenges in promoting business and human rights and why should business care about it? And finally, uh, pag-uusapan po natin ang mga advocacies at recommendations namin sa ating government at sa business sector. Uh, let me share with you a video created by the United Nations Development Program and the Commission on Human Rights in the Philippines. Uh, and this would provide us a, an overview of the guiding principles and the national action plan. impact our lives through their operations, products, and services. And these impacts may be positive or negative. A common perception is that good business is good for the economy. It creates jobs and livelihood opportunities. But business may also bring human rights harm. Sinisilip na ang mga posibleng paglabag ng mga may-ari ng Ketex Manufacturing Corporation. Ang sa Sapphire Exit Standard at Fire Code of the Philippines ang usali ng Ketex Manufacturing. Ang Phoenix Mine Spill ang itinuturing na biggest mining disaster sa Pilipinas. Kung beses na mas marami sa itinapong uh, mine waste noon ng Mark Rumber sa ilog ng Boa. Dito sa dahila ng pagsapog ka dito ay ang mga nagpasa na mga panindang mga puto. Kaya ang isang hindi pa nakikilala ang babae ang namatay ang inaarap na ngayon ang dahilan ng pagsapog. When we say human rights, these are the rights under international human rights laws, which have become part of our constitution and national laws, such as right to life, right to health, right to adequate food, right to housing, right to water and sanitation, and right to self-determination. And we know that under international human rights laws, the state has the obligation to respect, protect, and fulfill these obligations. Ordinarily, companies voluntarily undertake corporate social responsibility that address the economic, social, and environmental concerns of their respective stakeholders. But a human rights framework is not confined to the company's objectives, but based on internationally recognized human rights laws and principles in dealing with a company's economic, social, and environmental impacts. To respond to the perennial global challenge of ensuring that the states are able to protect the rights of peoples and communities from business-related human rights abuses, the UN Human Rights Council unanimously adopted the UN Guiding Principles on Business and Human Rights in June 2011. The UNGPs on BHR is founded on the three pillars. These are state duty to protect, corporate responsibility to respect, and access to remedy. 
These were drawn from the framework developed by John Raggi, then UN Secretary General's Special Representative on Business and Human Rights. Pillar 1 refers to the state duty to protect its citizens as well as other people living on its territory against human rights abuses by third parties, including business entities through appropriate policies, regulation, and by providing means of adjudication. The state, acting through the various government agencies under Pillar 1, is obliged to ensure that all business enterprises doing business in the Philippines, whether big or small, regardless of the nature of the business operations, follow the laws, rules, and regulations to prevent any human rights harm to the public through their operations, products, or services. When the state is doing business through the government-owned and controlled corporations or GOCCs or any entity receiving substantial state support, the state should ensure that these corporations or business enterprises do not cause any human rights harm. Otherwise, it would also mean a violation of the state's human rights obligation. Pillar 2. Corporate responsibility to respect provides the baseline responsibility of business enterprises to do no harm on the rights of people in conduct of their business and to undertake human rights due diligence to enable them to identify the human rights risk entailed by their business and address adverse impacts that may occur. What is required from business enterprises? Avoid infringing on human rights. Address any adverse human rights impacts with which they are involved. Identify, prevent, mitigate, and remedy any adverse human rights impacts that they are involved. Pillar 3 on remedy requires the state to provide greater access by victims of business-related abuses to effective judicial and non-judicial remedies. Pillar 3 is based on the state duty to protect humans. Under this pillar, the state should ensure the effectiveness of domestic judicial mechanism in addressing BHR-related abuses, reduce legal, practical, and other relevant barriers that victims face. Some of the common barriers to effective judicial remedy are attribution of responsibility amongst members of a corporate group, delays and length of proceedings, corruption and economic or political pressures, and cost of judicial proceedings, among others. In June 2011, a working group on business and human rights composed of five appointed experts of balanced geographical representation was constituted by the UN Human Rights Council to ensure that the UN guiding principles on business and human rights are widely disseminated, robustly implemented, and firmly embedded in international governance. In 2014, the UN Working Group on Business and Human Rights came up with a guide on the development of National Action Plan on Business and Human Rights. States are strongly encouraged to develop, enact, and update a National Action Plan on Business and Human Rights as part of the state responsibility to disseminate and implement the guiding principles on business and human rights. A National Action Plan on BHR is an evolving policy strategy developed by a state against adverse human rights impacts by business enterprises in conformity with the UN guiding principles on business and human rights. So, it is the Philippine government's obligation to develop the plan. However, there are key elements in making a National Action Plan. The plan should be based on the UNGP on BHR, so we should know the guiding principles. The NAP should show ability of the state to address challenges in the implementation of UNGP. Everyone should participate, and the process should be inclusive and non-discriminatory in developing the NAP on BHR. The NAP should have a built-in system of monitoring evaluation, and continuous updating with stakeholders. The Philippine National Action Plan on Business and Human Rights shall be developed with the commitment and initiative of the Philippine government and the joint efforts from business and civil society organizations. 
So let's do business in the Philippines the right way. So, um, napaka dali naman pong intindihin ang video na napanood natin. Um, and uh, this guiding principles drafted by United Nations Special Representative Jan Rogi, uh, siya po ay isang professor sa Oxford University, uh, was adopted by the Human Rights Council on June 2011. And this document was actually created for more than five years. No? Uh, ang drafting po niyan uh, has undergone several or actually numerous consultations around the world doon sa mga regional formations, halimbawa Asia, uh, Latin America, Europe. Uh, Nagkonsulta rin po sa maraming mga um, state and governments sa business sector sa mga international uh, organizations, sa mga civil society groups, and of course, most importantly, sa mga affected communities, mga tao at mga biktima ng mga, unfortunately, uh, abuses ng uh, mga operations ng mga private uh, corporations, especially the big corporations. At ang Pilipinas po ay isa sa mga nag-concur dito sa uh, document na ito na inaprubahan ng buong Human Rights Council. Uh, and this is a document uh, adopted by the Human Rights Council. Uh, in June 2011, pero July po, lumabas yung actual na document. Uh, and it also uh, speaks, uh, also uh, include yung decision to establish a working group on business and human rights. So this working group would ensure that the guiding principles will be implemented. So sila po ang naglalabas ng mga patakaran, ng mga advisories, ng mga reports no, on what's happening and uh, how the guiding principles are being implemented worldwide. At nagpo-conduct po ito ng regular ng meeting sa United Nations Human Rights Council na nakabase sa Geneva. Ang nature ng UNGP, unfortunately of course, it is not a treaty, it is not a convention, Kaya hindi po, siya nan, hindi po siya binding sa mga bansa. Hindi katulad ng ibang mga treaties like halimbawa yung uh, vows, yung convention against, violations against um, women or yung convention on civil and political rights uh, or yung convention against torture na uh, niratify po ng mga bansa ito. Kaya may obligation sila. Uh, this guiding principle is not a treaty, kaya nga po voluntary lang. No? Pero may pagkakaisa ang uh, United Nations no? sa importanteng laman ng dokumento. And this document uh, does not create uh, bagong mga obligations to states and business enterprise. Nasabi lang nito na mayroong tamang pamamaraan para gawin ang business na nire-respeto pa rin at napopromote ang karapatang pantao ng lahat. Even the business sector and those uh, communities, people who are affected by their um, businesses. Ginagamit po ang dokumento sa analytical lens. No? Um, hindi siya uh, vague concepts lamang. Dapat ito ay tinitingnan, pinapag-aralan muna ang konteksto, ang kalagayan ng bansa, ng business sector, ng buong society, ng mga tao uh, para mas tama no, yung pag-implement. Kaya dapat mayroong pag-aaral na malalim at pag-aanalisa kung paano i-implement ang dokumento. And uh, it, the principles applies to everyone, to, to all uh, corporations, no? to all businesses, kay malaki siya, kay maliit, kay medium, 
kay pag-aari ng mga foreigner or pag-aari ng mga uh, national no at kasama rin siyempre yung mga transnational corporations and as we said dahil nga kailangan ng pag-aaral no ang dokumento na ito ay eh, hindi po yan one size fit all kailangan merong adjustment merong pag um, pag-assess para malaman kung paano siya i-implement sa very specific na mga companies. So, uh, how does it apply to the Philippines? No? Uh, sa lahat ho ng bansa, ay eh, applicable ito. Dahil alam naman natin na ang ekonomiya ng isang bansa ay eh, nabubuhay dahil sa business. No? At dito lamang sa Pilipinas, ay napakalam, napakarami natin mga business establishments. Uh, mahigit isang milyon no? at napakaraming mga manggagawa, napakaraming mga dependent dito sa ating mga business uh, establishments mula micro hanggang mga large uh, corporations. At uh, napaka-importante po ng guiding principles to apply sa Pilipinas dahil sa mga aspirations natin as a nation. No? Ang Philippines is a has obli has uh, obliged no and has uh, subscribed doon sa uh, international uh, agenda or goal ng sustainable development goals ng 2030. Uh, na tayo ay kasama sa dapat na maka-achieve nitong mga goals na ito. Meron din po ang Pilipinas na Ambition 2040 na ginawa nung mag-start ang uh, administration ni President Duterte. So, maliban dun sa isang sa international goal ng SDG, merong sarili ang Pilipinas ng Ambition 2040. And uh, this period, napaka-importante lalo no ng business and human rights dahil nasa isang context tayo na uh, I think no one really no one of us no really experience in our lifetime isang pandemic no isang uh, virus na hindi natin nakikita pero naapektuhan tayong lahat lalo na yung economic uh, situation ng bansa at ng lahat ng mamamayan so, this pandemic actually exposed yung vulnerabilities ng mga kumpanya at especially yung mga manggagawa uh, at yung mga dependent ng uh, mga businesses dito sa Pilipinas. Kaya yun po ang context at important um, uh, applicability ng pag paggamit ng business and human rights principles dito sa atin. So, ano ba itong sinasabi nating uh, sustainable development goals? I know uh, many of you have already heard of this. Uh, ito po ang pandaigdigang uh, goals o gustong makamit ng uh, buong mundo. No? Labing pitong uh, goals at napaka-importante ng, ng bawat isa. Halimbawa po, yung by 2030 daw sana ay wala ng uh, may hirap sa buong mundo o at least nabawasan ng matindi yung poverty uh, incidence. Kasama din po dito yung uh, usapin ng reduced inequality. So may pagkakapantay-pantay na ba? Uh, ang, ang sweldo ba ng lahat ng mga tao ay sasakat sa kanilang pangangailangan? Kasama din po dito sa goal na ito yung climate action na talagang napaka-critical na issue natin ngayon sa buong mundo. Uh, is the business contributing para mabawasan ng pollution ng buong mundo? Uh, paano ba natin yan dito ginagawa sa Pilipinas? Ma-achieve ba natin ang isang malinis na environment by 2030? Makakapag-contribute na tayo sa paghinto ng pagbabago ng klima sa buong mundo. Yung Goal 17 po pertains to partnership uh, for the goals. No? So dito kinikilala na hindi lang gobyerno uh, ang merong obligasyon to ensure 
that the country will survive, that the country will meet these development goals. But it uh, emphasizes na lahat ng um, sektor, no? kung dito sa Pilipinas, uso sa atin yung uh, whole of nation approach, uh, ito po, sinasabi nito yung whole of society approach, whole of world approach, uh, government, private sector, uh, civil society organizations, yung mga people's organization natin, uh, at ang mga karanilong tao. So ito po yung uh, SDG 2030. At ang lead organization po, lead agency ng Pilipinas dito ay ang uh, PSA, yung Philippine Statistics Office, uh, at ng NEDA, yung National uh, Economic and Development uh, Agency. But of course, uh, all agencies of the government, including the judiciary, including the legislative uh, branches, should contribute to the attainment of these SDGs. Okay, so the uh, ang SDG po ay ginawa no? uh, before 2015, pero ang start ng implementation nito ay 2016. Okay? And it has uh, five pillars. Uh, lahat ay letter P. No? So ito ay pagtitiyak na lahat ng aspeto uh, ay uulad, no? including people, uh, planet, at usapin ng prosperity. Uh, it also seeks to strengthen universal peace in larger freedom. Uh, at uh, katulad ng nabanggit ko kanina, napaka-importante nung partnership to achieve the goals. Ang main slogan po ng SDG is leaving no one behind kasi ito nga yung matinding uh, problema ng buong mundo. Yung inequality, yung napaka-yaman ng mga mayayaman, ngunit kakaunti lamang sila, pero mas marami po uh, ang mga mahihirap. Uh, dito sa Pilipinas, we know that only around 50 uh, families in the Philippines own as much as about um, 80% ng yaman ng Pilipinas. At yung 20% ay yung uh, ilang pamilya. No? Kung 100 million tayo, ilang families yun, uh, naghahati-hati lang yun doon sa 20% ng wealth ng Pilipinas. Okay. So, leave no one behind. No? Uh, by 2030, uh, the world should have ended, or necessarily ended, pero yung uh, extreme poverty ay at least nabawasan no? at na-reduce ang inequality at pinaprioritize no? yung mga actions for the most marginalized and poorest people. Um, Ang Pilipinas po ay nag-commit initially uh, noong 2017 na gagawin natin yung uh, 155 uh, indicators out of the 232 global SDG indicators. So sa lahat ng goals, labing pito, uh, uh, gagawa ng mga aksyon sa Philippines, uh, but from the 169 targets, 97 targets pa lang yung uh, kayang gawin, doon nagpo-commit. Uh, pero nagsabi din po ang Philippine, ang PSA at ang NEDA na unti-unti by uh, uh, tire ay uh, pipilitin ng Pilipinas na lahat ng mga targets at lahat ng mga indicators ay uh, makakapag-contribute at gagawin ng Pilipinas. So these are the international goals no, na may commitment ang Philippines. Ngayon, dito sa Pilipinas naman, meron tayong tinatawag na Vision 2040 or Ambition 2040. Um, malawak din po ang konsultasyon na ginawa ng government, ng NEDA, uh, very late 2016 and early 2017 to develop this uh, 
a vision for the Philippines na by 2040 lahat daw tayo ay tayo ay middle class society na at lahat ay nag enjoy ng mahaba at malusog na uh, na buhay no? uh, at ang bansa is a high trust society vibrant culturally diverse at resilient so napakaganda hong ano ambition niya ano at nagdevelop ang NEDA ng mga parang mga pillars din how to achieve this matatag maging hawa at panatag na buhay by 2040 uh, Merong pillars for pillar for malasakit or enhancing the social fabric. Merong pillar sa pagbabago, uh, reducing inequality at makapag-transform na maigi ang society. Uh, at yung usapin ng patuloy na pag-unlad or increasing growth potential. Palaging ipinagmamayabang sa atin ng government natin na maganda yung uh, status ng ating ekonomiya, pataas ng pataas ang ating mga gross domestic products pero sa totoo lang nararamdaman ba yon ng lahat yung bang trickle down effect ay trickle na lang forever hindi ba pwedeng pantay-pantay tayo makakatanggap ng biyaya ng pagbabago at ng pagkulad so ito po no ay katulad ng SDG ay sama-samang goal din ng Pilipinas, so dapat lahat ay nagko-contribute at malaki uh, ang papel ng business sector. So in this slide, I just want to show you that the SDGs in Ambition 2040 are parallel um, <coughs> me, objectives uh, at, cons at uh, implementation. Sina sa ang SDG po ay rights based, no? malinaw yon sa dokumento niya. At ang uh, Ambition 2040, ito din ang ating at ito din ang kiniklaim ng ating uh, pamahalaan na nakabatay ito sa karapatang pantao. Uh, and uh, that has to be proven, no? Pero pinapakita lang po rito na sabay nating ina-achieve ang SDG at ang 2040 dahil marami sa mga goals, sa mga components ay halos magkakatulad. Ang Ambition 2040 po uh, will be achieved uh, step by step. No? So every administration creates their own uh, development plan. And this is the current development plan. Uh, at by 2022, inaasahan or ina-expect na middle income country na tayo by 2022. Yung growth will be uh, inclusive at bababa dapat yung poverty incidences natin from 30% to 20%. Uh, lahat ng bansa po ay merong assessment doon sa Human Development Index. So dapat ba by 2022? mataas na ang Human Development Index ng Pilipinas. Ibig sabihin, gumaganda ang kalagayan ng bawat pamilya, ng bawat tao uh, na nakatira sa Pilipinas. Uh, yung um, unemployment rate uh, will decline by 2% from 5.5 to 3.5. Uh, mas magiging mataas na daw ang tiwala ng citizen sa gobyerno at sa kakayanan natin as a society. At yung mga individuals and communities will be more resilient. Napaka-resilient po ng mga Pilipino. No? Sa dami ng mga uh, natural calamities, even man-made calamities na tumatama sa atin. At ngayon, nasusubok tayo dito sa COVID na ito. But uh, the development plan hopes na mas tataas pa yung resiliency ng mga tao. So, ibig sabihin, Tumataas yung capacity natin to cope with uh, problems, no? uh, uh, major problems na darating sa atin. Uh, and then, Filipinos will have greater drive for innovation. Mas, mas ano na tayo, mas, mas, mas sisipag, no? mas um, mamamotivate tayo for uh, more innovations uh, para sa ating lahat. 
So, yan po ang PDP 2017 to 2022. Uh, yan ang gustong um, achieve. Kaya, uh, again, no, I would like to uh, go back doon sa bakit importante yung guiding principles on business and human rights sa Pilipinas. Kasi po, sa konteksto nitong ating mga gustong mangyari, sa konteksto na lahat tayo dapat sama-samang tutulong, uh, magko-cooperate para ma-achieve yung Sustainable Development Goals, yung Ambition 2040, at para makaraos tayo dito sa pandemic na ating dinaranas ngayon. Now, um, you would ask, tinadapt ba ng Pilipinas ang UN Guiding Principles on Business and Human Rights? Kung adoption lang po, it did, no? Uh, when it concurred in 2011 doon sa dokumento ng United Nations. Pero ini-implement ba? So, yan po ang major na question na hanggang ngayon hindi namin masasagot sa inyo straightforward but only from our observations na hindi pa nai-implement no, ng gobyerno uh, ang usapin ng business and human rights. Medyo siguro mga kaunti kaunti pero hindi systematic, hindi programatic at hindi strategic ang uh, paggamit nila ng mga prinsipyo ng United Nations. Uh, so, paano magko-contribute ang mga business establishments natin dito sa ating uh, mga ambisyon? Uh, sabi nga po noong uh, a video, we should do it the right and rights way. No? Gamitin yung guiding principle na very important pillars, no? Yung duty of the state to protect its citizen and the corporate responsibility to respect at uh, yung pagpaprovide no, ng government at ng mga business establishments ng mga remedies no, para sa mga biktima uh, na ma-access nila uh, at magkaroon sila ng relief or reparation, o at justicia. No, tatlong pillars po yan na, uh, import, na pinaka-importante doon sa usapin ng business and human rights. So, pillar two, yung corporate responsibility. No? Uh, briefly, uh, sinasabi po nito, uh, corporations should not infringe. Sorry po. No? Uh, on human rights of others and should address human rights adverse impact. Uh, yun, inuulit yung responsibility to respect. Um, ito ay batay sa mga international human rights standards. Uh, at dapat napiprevent niya or namimitigate niya yung mga uh, untowards or adverse effect ng kanyang mga operation sa mga communities, sa mga tao, doon sa dependent sa operations ng uh, ng kompanya. Sa usapin ng uh, ano yung mga pinoproduce niya mga produkto, yung value chain niya, yung supply chain niya. So, dapat napiprevent or namimitigate yung mga adverse effects. Uh, at uh, yung uh, responsibility is not only for big corporations, no? Lahat po, regardless of size, sector, con context, ownership, and structure. Uh, structure, kung kayo man ay parent company, subsidiary company, o kayo ay uh, mga franchises lamang, uh, lahat. Uh, kung ito man ay foreign-owned or Filipino-owned. Yeah. Uh, lahat po ng binabanggit ko dito ay nandoon sa dokumento ng Business and Human Rights. At uh, I hope no, uh, lahat kayo ay nakabasa na ito, especially yung management no, at leadership ng inyong mga uh, corporations. 
uh, in summary, simple lang ang sinasabi ng ano, ng corporate responsibility to respect. Do no harm kahit na sino, kahit na ang ang of course, ang main objective ay profit, no? Pero wag naman kayong manakit ng iba habang uh, kayo ay kumikita. Do no harm and conduct corporate due diligence. Uh, yung masino, masinsin na pag-aaral ninyo, pag-assess ninyo, uh, at pag, uh, uh, pag uh, yun, at risk assessment noong buong proseso ng inyong mga operations. Conducting corporate due diligence is a main uh, element po noong uh, prinsipyo ng business and human rights. Um, yun nga po, this is only a reiteration no? noong uh, mga prinsipyo ng corporate responsibility to respect uh, human rights. So, uh, what is a national action plan? Again, uh, I am not sure if any one of you have heard of this national action plan. But as I mentioned, uh, noong 2011, I created a working group on business and human rights ng UN. Uh, at noong 2016 po, uh, ito yung isa sa mga guidelines na nilabas nila na lahat ng bansa dapat ay magkaroon ng national action plan to implement yung guiding principles on business and human rights. So, it, it is an evolving policy strategy it should be developed by the state to protect against adverse human rights impacts by business enterprises in conformity with, again, with the document uh, ng guiding principles on business and human rights. Uh, meron pong guidelines na ginawa no kung paano ito makakatulong uh, sa lahat ng mga estado no na ini-encourage na sumunod. So it would uh, enhance no yung greater coordination and coherence within the government uh, on the range of public policy areas that relate to business and human rights. So mas magiging masinop daw no ang plano at coordinated mas magiging um, ano siya uh, makakapag-complement makakapag-supplement doon sa takbo ng lahat ng businesses at syempre doon sa uh, pagpapatupad ng mga regulations ng ating pamahalaan. It is an inclusive process to identify national priorities and concrete policy measures and action. So, dapat i-prioritize ano ba yung mga major issues natin on business and human rights at um, inclusive ang proseso. Lahat dapat ay kasama no? yun sa pag-identify ng mga key issues natin. Importante po yung transparency and predictability no? uh, noong plano para sa domestic and international uh, stakeholders. Ito ay isang proseso ng continuous monitoring, measuring, and evaluation ng implementation ng plano. Kung hindi ibig sabihin gumawa ka ng plano, okay na yon. May dokumento na bahala na kung paano siya ma-implement. So dapat tuloy-tuloy yung pagmamonitor at pagmamessure kung naa-achieve ba yung plano na yan. Um, and uh, it should be a continuous platform, a regular platform para sa mga tuloy-tuloy uh, na dialogue ng mga stakeholders, okay? So when we say stakeholders, we're not only mentioning, we're not only referring to the government in the private sector or to the business establishments. Kasama po lahat dyan ang uh, ang uh, ang ating uh, mga mamamayan, ang mga civil society organizations, yung buong society. And it should be flexible, no? Uh, yet common format that facilitates international cooperation, coordination, 
in exchanges of good practices and lessons learned. So, napaka-importante yung um, sharing ng mga uh, best practices, ng mga lessons na nakuha na, na sa pag-i-implement noong plano uh, for international cooperation. As I mentioned earlier, no, uh, regular po ang discussion, ang mga dialogue sa international level, sa UN, uh, among the business sector, uh, among the government on this uh, and ha- on how the guiding principles is being implemented sa buong mundo. Uh, yung guidance document for developing a national action plan, you know, uh, siyempre, ang, ang una doon, you know, ang dapat ang foundation ng national action plan ay yung guiding principles. And it should respond to specific challenges faced in the national context. No? So kung binabanggit natin yung usapin ng matinding impact ng COVID pandemic sa Pilipinas, uh, baka dapat ma-identify yun as isang uh, specific challenge. Uh, challenge na maraming nawala ng trabaho. Maraming mga small, medium enterprises na napititang magsara. Uh, yung usapin ng security of tenure ng ating mga manggagawa. Yung usapin ng napakaliit na suporta sa ating mga agricultural workers. Kaya hindi na secured ang ating uh, food supply sa Pilipinas. So these are some of the major issues no, na baka dapat ay maisama sa mga challenges at magawa ng plano at ng action. Again, inclusiveness and transparency. Uh, hindi po pwedeng kayo lang ang gagawa ng plano. No? Kasi kami, uh, lalo na yung mga communities, mga tao na dependent dun sa mga businesses ninyo, ay apektado. Kaya dapat lahat may kasama at nakukonsulta at mayroong meaningful participation in developing the plan and implementing its content. And again, continuous process ng regular review and uh, updating. So, uh, napaka-detailed po ng uh, process for developing a national action plan. And this is included in the advisory of the uh, working group on business and human rights. So the government should initiate uh, the framework for the national action plan. So obligation nila, no? dapat sila talaga yung mag-initiate nito dahil uh, as a member state of the United Nations, of the Human Rights um, Council, ay uh, sila dapat talaga ang magpasimuno kung paano natin uh, develop ang national action plan and uh, creating the engagement platform for the private entities, for the civil society organizations, for the public, no? uh, para maumpisahan ang proseso ng pagde-develop ng uh, plano. No? At syempre, importante yung pag-allocate ng budget uh, doon sa mga consultations na gagawin. So, number two, assessment and consultation. So, uh, we all need to have a sound uh, understanding of uh, the situation of our business um, uh, sector no? and how it affects your community, your tao. Magkakaroon po dapat ng uh, assessment no? uh, para mas malaman natin ano yung dapat natin i-prioritize na sa ating pagpaplano. Yung drafting ng initial uh, national action plan ay uh, again, nire-reiterate yung uh, interested stakeholders uh, should participate in the drafting uh, of the plan and uh, including yung mga finalization nito at yung paglo-launch nito para makita ng lahat na sama-samang ginawa itong plano na ito at lahat siyempre ay magko-commit doon sa pag-i-implement ng plano. So yung pang-apat, 
uh, implementations uh, phase na po. So, kung ano-ano yung mga dinitalya natin doon, how we will do that, uh, yun yung ating uh, pagsama-samang uh, gagawin. No? At uh, importante din sa phase na ito, sa implementation phase, eh, mayroong uh, multi-stakeholders monitoring group uh, na uh, titingnan kung na-achieve ba yung ating nasa plano at makapagawa agad ng mga uh, remedial steps no, para maiayos yung mas tamang implementation. Uh, and I'm sure this is actually what uh, business uh, corporations are doing, no? yung mabibilis ng mga adjustments habang kang nag implement Patuloy mong minomonitor at, at ina-assess. And finally, syempre lahat tayo dapat kasama sa evaluation. Ng, uh, ng National Action Plan na sama-sama natin ginawa, in-implement, so dapat sama-sama rin tayo sa pag-evaluate, no? at i-a-update po natin ito. Hindi po isang action plan lang ito. So kung nag-identify tayo ng 3 to 5 na priority uh, challenges na a-action na natin, so posibleng uh, kung sinabi natin, o oh, sige, one year or two years itong ating action plan, kung nag-improve yung una nating mga challenges, di magdagdag tayo ng mga bagong uh, priority uh, issues. At ipagpatuloy pa natin itong uh, bagong mga plano kung hindi natin na-achieve yung iba pa. So, ibig sabihin po, tuloy-tuloy ito, uh, cycle ang proseso, at sama-sama natin dapat na uh, ginagawa. Okay. Uh, based from the advisory of the working group, marami naman na mapong mga estado, mga states, ang um, nakapag-deliver, no? naka-develop ng kanilang national action plan. But you would notice uh, most of these countries are actually uh, first world countries. no? Uh, well established na ang kanilang mga systems. Possible, napakaganda ng kanilang uh, business policy environment kaya madali ang paggawa. Posible din na hindi na ganun ka major ang mga issues nila on business uh, kaya madali silang nakapag-develop. No? At least dalawampung abansa, no? mostly European, ay meron ng mga national action plans. Meron naman pong mga nag-commit, nagagawa din sila. So dalawampung bansa ito. Uh, dito na po mapasok yung mga developing countries or mga middle uh, income countries. Uh, pero nandito din yung mga bansa na talagang mga may hirap, katulad yung mga nasa Africa, Mozambique, Uganda, Zambia. Uh, so tatanungin nyo, nasa ng Pilipinas? Nandito pa lang po tayo. At unfortunately, it's not actually the Philippine government who's initiating uh, the development of a national action plan. Ang initiative po ay nanggagaling pa sa ating uh, NHRI. Uh, it stands for National Human Rights Institutions. And uh, ang, sa Pilipinas po, yan ang ating Commission on Human Rights of the Philippines. At kasama ang mga civil society. Uh, ito po, uh, itong mga initiatives na to on business and human rights is supported by uh, UNDP, uh, United Nations Development Program, kasi siyempre yan nga yung kanilang uh, advocacy. Okay. Um, kasama ang siyam na bansa na mayroong mga NHRIs at CSOs na nag initiate no, ng uh, mga dialogues sessions, mga pag-aaral, mga kasama ang business enterprises para magkaroon tayo ng uh, national action plan. Okay, uh, just a, an example po of a national action plan by Thailand. This is their first national action plan at ang time period ay 2019 to 2022. At nag-identify lang sila ng apat na major uh, issues, no? yung usapin ng labor. Alam naman po natin na napa, uh, ang mabilis, no? napaka-robos ng economy ng 
Thailand. Napakarami mga business establishments doon, national at international. Uh, including po yung mga uh, regional uh, NGOs, mga regional offices ng mga companies, ay marami ay nandito. Kaya major issue talaga nila yung uh, labor, no? yung security of tenure, yung usapin ng uh, mga work permits dahil napakarami nilang mga uh, expats no? sa Thailand. Um, kasama din po dito, no, uh, hindi kasama, kanya lang, uh, bigla ko lang naisip na napakaganda noong uh, universal health care ng Thailand, no, uh, na sana ma-implement din natin dito, lalo na doon sa ating mga manggagawa. Lahat po kasi doon ay sagot nila kahit na ano pang sakit. That's only a, an interjection. Um, isa pa sa, pla- sa kanilang uh, nakitang major issue ay yung uh, impact no, ng business sa community, sa kanilang lupa, land, uh, natural resources, and environment. Na sa halos lahat ng developing countries, Asian countries, issues po natin lahat kung ano yung degradation no, na nangyayari na sa ating natural resources, sa ating kalupaan, no, yung Uh, mga pananiman, no? yung mga tinataniman, mga agricultural land ay nagiging subdivisions lahat or mga malls. So saan na pupunta yung ating mga uh, indigenous people, yung ating mga magsasaka, yung ating mga mangingisda. So issue din po yan sa kanila. And then, uh, yung issue ng human rights defenders. Um, marami po mga human rights defenders, mga organizers, mga aktivista sa Thailand, katulad din dito sa atin, na nakukulong. No? Uh, sila ay still under military junta at napakahigpit no? ng kanilang mga patakaran. Pero alam nila, isang issue ito ng business and human rights kasi yung mga HRDs, yan po ang nagmamonitor no? sa mga violations na nagagaling na nagagawa no? ng mga corporations at yung mga human rights defenders ang nagiging uh, target many times at nababiolate yung kanilang uh, right to advocate for mga uh, beneficiaries halimbawa ng mga nasa land rights uh, conflict among indigenous people and among uh, agricultural workers. At ang pang-apat pong uh, action plan ng Thailand ay on cross-border investment and multinational enterprises. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, alam natin na ang Thailand is a regional hub no? ng mga businesses at iba pa pong mga um, gawain no? sa, reg- sa region. Kaya nakita nila na yung cross-border investment, especially with uh, countries like uh, Vietnam, Myanmar, um, Cambodia no ay napakaimportante na pag-usapan including yung iba pang mga countries who are actually investing in Thailand no na mga multinational enterprises na nakita nila na dapat masino pang kanilang plano syempre nagbe-benefit naman ng maayos ang Thailand and at the same time nagbe-benefit din yung kanilang mga partners from abroad so we can see this national action plan really identified Uh, key areas, key priority challenges no? sa usapin ng business sa Thailand. And uh, we're just hoping na maging matagumpay sila. And we're also hoping that this is what we can do. Uh, our state, uh, our government will eventually do para sa ating bansa. So the National Action Plan on the HR is a rights-based approach. Uh, that will provide us guidance and strategies for a pro-people and genuine development ng lahat, hindi lang po ng ilang sektor. Uh, business enterprises have the responsibility to greatly contribute to achieving SDGs 2030 and Ambition 2040. So yung po yung, para sa amin, napaka-importante ninyong magiging uh, responsibilidad uh, para sa lahat ng Pilipinas.